so this talk um, is a continuation of a talk I gave at the last Scala Love. And the last time I thought uh, I was going to try to cover, um, uh, you know, most of the type system, but it just was too big. And so I did a part one. I thought, well, I'll have a part two. Well, okay. As I fleshed out this part two, again, it was too big. So they'll have to be a part three. So what I'm going to cover today is just these three things. Um, and two of them are new in Scala uh, 3. Um, let me turn down the button here. Uh, two are new in Scala 3, uh, polymorphic function types and type lambdas. And a higher kind of types is in, uh, was in Scala 2 uh, for a very long time. It's been there. And it's been something that I, I often, uh, for a long time, have struggled with. It was hard to kind of really grab, uh, understand it deeply. And so what I'm going to try to do is sort of give you insight into that uh, today. So, um, <clears throat> so I'm going to start by, by looking at uh, some research languages, programming languages, um, because, uh, because uh, type lambdas uh, kind of map to lambda calculus. Uh, and so I wanted to kind of talk about how that works. Um, lambda calculus is a very simple language. It just has three things in it, abstractions. Uh, which is what you're looking at there, lambda x dot x. Um, and that's a lambda, what we call a lambda, uh, like a function. On, uh, and it, it uh, is a anonymous, doesn't have a name. And what the lambda means is I'm going to bind a variable. And, uh, it, it, and, it, and it lambda names a variable. And then you have a dot, and then you have the body, which is like the, the body of the function. So uh, you can apply. Uh, that's an application. That's another thing. But the third thing is just a variable. Uh, so you can apply a uh, function, like an abstraction, and the way that works is like, let's say we want to put 42 in there for x. Um, we, we kind of can erase the lambda, the x, and the dot, and then everywhere x appears on the right-hand side, we put 42 there. So what that top uh, lambda expression is, is the identity function. Whatever you put in, you get out. And that's it. That's all that there is to lambda calculus. It's, it's really, really teeny tiny. But it was, it was uh, invented in the 30s, 1930s, um, to try and talk about, like when they were trying to figure out what is computable by people, because in those days they didn't have uh, computers lying around other than human ones. Um, and so, uh, you know, the, the uh, belief is, is that, that anything that's computable sequentially can be computed in Lambda Calculus. So what you do is you encode things. So like the, the next two lines there, lambda t dot lambda f dot t is a one way to encode a Boolean true. And then lambda t dot lambda f dot f, that's, that's how you can encode Boolean false. And so those are lambda abstractions themselves. And um, the way like that one would work is you plug a value in for t and then you plug a value in for f. And then what it's going to do is return the first one. Um, on the other one, you plug in the same two values, and it'll return the second one. Um, and then you can encode if then else. You can encode natural numbers, um, and you know, basically, uh, pretty much compute anything. That's the idea. So um, the one thing you can do with lambda calculus, though, is like I can make an if then else encoded in a, in a function. Oh, and by the way, the only thing that there can be are those lambdas. So the thing I plug in every time is another lambda. So it's always just lambdas. So what I can do is I can say these two, let's call them Boolean, the, these two possible things that I've decided are encoding Boolean. I'll call them, they're, they're a type bool. Um, and then I can put a, a uh, requirement on a parameter that it has a certain type. And so that is to prevent things like if 42 then, I mean, that doesn't actually make sense. So you can, you can write that in, lambda calculus because there's no types. But when they added types to it, then I can say, well, I'm going to make my if then else. The condition one will have to give me a bool, right? Um, and that's what it looks. It looks a little bit like it does in Scala, where you, you, know, you have a colon after the input parameter, and then there's a type. Um, and then on the right-hand side of the dot, there's no types. It just sort of can infer the result type from that, just like Scala does. and um, the type of that lambda expression is an arrow type. So bool to bool, it takes a Boolean and it returns a Boolean or it, it results in a Boolean. 
um, after you evaluate it. So anyway, that's that's sort of the uh, the uh, uh, so the uh, that's simply type lambda calculus what you can do with it. So uh, translating that to Scala, you can see that Scala works a lot like that. There's this thing called a, a we don't usually call it a lambda. Uh, we didn't call it a lambda in the in the programming in Scala book because 12 years ago, uh, Martin Oderski thought that was a little bit intimidating for Java people because Java people were uh, calling these closures. Um, so we actually st first originally started to call them closures and then someone sort of said, well, closures are more general. So we settled on function literal. And so uh, a function literal in Scala is a lambda. It is a lambda. And nowadays, of course, Java has lambdas. So lambda is a perfectly fine word to use for it. Um, and it's just this. It's, it, and, and when you create a lambda, you, you just invent a variable name. And then you can use it in the right-hand side. That's, uh, that first line of there is a, is a, a function literal. And when you run this, you'd get a function value at runtime. And then at compile time, there is a type to it, which is an arrow type, just like in, in simply type lambda calculus. Um, one difference in, in Scala is you can have multiple parameters in functions in Scala, and you can't in simply type lambda calculus. The way you do multiple functions, uh, going back to that, is you just have like lambda t, lambda f. That's actually, you could think of that as a function that takes two things. So it's curried. So um, there's something else too in Scala that isn't in lambda calculus, uh, obviously, and that is we have named functions. And so uh, the way, uh, you know, like here I have an ID a function, which is an identifier function for Booleans um, that takes a Boolean and returns it, right? So what um, the way you can think, well, the way you can sort of map that back to lambda calculus is this thing called a record. So I can, you know, I can encode different things in lambda calculus. So one of the things I could do is say, well, let's make a list. And then I could say, okay, if the list is a list of characters that are valid identifier characters, let's call that type identifier. So um, what a record is, is a function, because everything in Lambda calculus is a function. It's a function that given an ident you know, a, a Lambda of type identifier, um, it gives you back another Lambda. And so it gives you back a, a member of that record. And what, what Scala does is it, it adds a name to the record, which we call the class name or trait name, um, which makes it a nominal type different from a structural type. But um, the basic idea of, of, of that is, um, you know, after uh, they check the names, they just look at the structure to make sure the structure is correct. And that kind of maps back to Lambda Calculus. So, um, so the last thing that we have, so in Scala, we have these two different things. We have named functions and anonymous functions and anonymous functions are lambdas. Named functions are not, they're methods. And so sometimes we, we have a method and we wanna pass it around as a value. And when we need that, we do ADA expansion. So what ADA expansion is, is really a wrapping kind of operation. Um, I take the method and I wrap it in a, in a function value that just, forwards the parameters to the method and then returns the result of the method, of calling the method. Um, and so that looks like this in, in Scala. I can, I can take you know, a, 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 a variable, I can initialize a variable of type Boolean to Boolean with a method that whose signature matches that. This, the method doesn't really have a type. It has, I mean, they say method type, but really in the compiler, they kind of talk about method types, but I kind of think of them more as signatures. They're not really types. Uh, and, and that I, a term cannot be of a method type. A term has to be of a lambda type if it's going to be a function. Um, I'll explain what terms are in a bit. But this is, for example, what it would look like at runtime, that bit of code I just showed you, um, the AD expansion code. Um, so first, up here in the right-hand corner is the singleton object for obj. I said object obj. That gives me one and only one object whose class is called object dollar sign in the bytecodes. So it's an instance of that class. And it has a method on it called ID that, that looks like that. So that's where that lives. Um, then there, the ADA expansion that happened automatically by the compiler is wrapping that in this other object, which shows up as a blue circle, uh, sorry, blue gray circle down here to the left. Um, and F refers to that guy. So F refers to this, this lower left circle and that closes over the object and kind of remembers where that is. Um, that one's a, 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 a type Boolean rocket Boolean. That's the type I need, which is a syntax sugar for function one Boolean comma Boolean, right? 
and it has an apply method. So it has another method on it because everything on the JVM has to be a member of a class, every method. So that's what that's what happens to the, I mean, that's how we do lambdas in, in Scala is we actually use another record. And one of the one of the members is named apply. And it's a it's a function that takes parameters and returns that thing. So that's ADA expansion. And I'm going to end this talk with uh, ADA expansion, which I think gives you an insight into ADA expansion at the type level, which I think can help people understand hierarchy of types, which are hard to understand. So that's ADA expansion. OK, uh, so far, so good. So um, one thing about uh, simply type lambda calculus is I, I, I kind of have to do a lot of verbosity because I mean, let me back up to this one. If I go here, uh, this lambda x colon bool x dot x at the very bottom left corner there, that is a function that takes a Boolean and returns it. That's the identity function for Booleans and I can only use it for Booleans. What if I want one for natural numbers? Well, I have to write it again. Lambda x dot nat dot x. What if I want from for string? Lambda x dot string dot x, right? That's tedious. Um, so this other uh, language that built on top of simply type lambda calculus called system F adds uh, abstraction over types. So I can say capital X is a type, uh, lowercase x is a term. It's, it's a, sort of a reference to a, well, that's not a reference, but it, it can be substituted with a um, lambda. Um, whereas capital X has to be substituted with a type, right? So this said, given a, you know, you kind of think of this as given an, a, a type dot, given a value of that type, which is a lambda of that type, you know, little x colon big X dot, the body is going to be X. So it's going to be this type. This, the way they, they say it is for all X, this will give you a function from X to X. That's how they write it in, in system F. So oddly enough, how do you apply a type? To one of these things is square brackets. So it's very similar to Scala again. Um, so I can just take this whole lambda abstraction, I put it in parens to make it obvious what was what the square brackets were kind of being applied to. Um, what that does is it, essentially you have to do the same kind of substitution. I can get rid of the lambda capital X dot and then everywhere in that expression that there was a capital X, I just substitute bool for it. And, and I end up with this guy uh, which has type bool to bool again. So that's that's system F. And that that's, um, shows up in languages like generics in Java or parametric polymorphism, type parameters in Scala and whatnot uh, in, in you know, mainstream languages. But that's where it kind of came from in the research community. So here's an example in Scala where I just I added a, I made a general, a generic identifier function or method. Um, ID of X, uh, X colon, well, okay, ID of big X, where big X, the purple one is a type, maybe it's Boolean string, whatever. Then I have a variable, uh, a sort of a term named X that has type big X and it's gonna just, the body is returned to what, what's passed in. So um, in Scala three, so let me, let me back up a second. In Scala two, I could eight expand this. So I could turn this into a function value. But every time I ADA expand this in Scala 2, it, it always picks an X. So I can ADA expand it into a function from Boolean to Boolean, or I could ADA expand it into a function from string to string. So it always, at the point of ADA expansion, applied an X already. Um, in Scala 3, there's something called polymorphic function types. This is new, where I don't, I, I kind of delayed applying X. And so it actually looks like this. This is a, a valid Scala thing. And I'm gonna show it to you because it's kind of weird looking. Well, I'll show you the next, next page here. The next page is this guy. Um, I can actually do this in Scala. And that's the type. It, it's, it doesn't look, you know, they don't, it's not a for all. I mean, this is a for all type. Uh, for all x, you know, x, x, um, but that's that's the type it looks like in, in Scala 3. It's not really syntax sugared, but here it is. This is the uh, polymorphic function uh, literal in Scala 3, and I can apply it by just putting a variable, uh, you know, a type in there. Let's put a uh, Boolean in, for example. I can say Boolean identity function equals this guy. And now I get back a Boolean to Boolean, just like we saw on the system F slide. And so, you know, this guy will return what he, what you pass to him. If you pass true to him, 
uh, he'll return that. If you pass false to him, he'll return that. But I could also apply it. I could say string uh, identity function equals PFV, polymorphic function value of string. I'm applying a type and I get back this uh, kind of old fashioned uh, Lambda in Scala. And this guy, if I you know pass a hello, I get hello back, right? It's, it's the identity function for strings. Okay, so that's, I think that's pretty easy to understand. Um, it probably isn't something that uh, uh, people use that often or felt the need for, but um, it is makes things more regular. Uh, okay, so that's polymorphic function types. So let me talk about what terms are. So once types were added, like simply like plain old lambda calculus just had lambdas. So those are all terms, it's terms everywhere. Once you added these types to the right of the colon, that's sort of like this different world. So there's terms and there's types. So in this expression, or that's a statement in Scala, there's two terms and one type. N is a term. Uh, any variable name or method name is a term. A method name is a term. Or maybe not a, well, I don't know if I, a variable name is a term. Let's put it that way. And 42, that's a, a, a object. That's the term like a, a singleton object, like object obj that I had on the previous slide, that's a term, 42 is a term, int is a type. So that's, uh, you know, types classify terms, that's what they do. And then um, that makes you wonder, well, what classifies types? And it turns out that um, uh, the same kind of thing happened with system F where there's things that I have to, work, times where I have to repeat myself. So they came up with system F omega and they added, um, type, well, kinds, which allows you to abstract over not just types, like system F lets you abstract over types, system F omega lets you abstract over type constructors also. Like list is a type constructor, when you pass in a type int, you get list event, it constructs a type. So um, the type of terms is called kind star in system F omega. So this is not valid Scala um, syntax, I just, I'm just kind of showing you the idea of like, if I have a type, a val is n, I, I could say type big N. And then the, you know, if I'm going to classify it, I'm going to say, well, that's a kind. And that that's like a kind annotation. It's in a type annotation or type, that would be kind star. And kind star is that you read it as type and it's the kind of uh, the type of term. So any term can be a, a, a type of kind star. Um, so that, what, um, uh, the reason they, they added this is so that they could add higher kinded types, not just kind star types. Um, system F has kind star types, but system F omega has, has higher kinded types, which are arrow types again, but arrows between stars. And so what that means is that like this type F, and again, this is not valid Scala syntax, but I'm saying star to star, and this arrow with a double headed arrow is Scala 3's sort of type level arrow. That's a function from type to type. So I just used it here. And again, this is not valid Scala syntax, but the concept is that it takes a proper type, which is a kind star type, and it produces another proper type, any anything. So like list takes an int. If you pass in an int to list in square brackets, you get a list of int. That's sort of the idea. And so I can do that. I can say, you know, type F equals list. Uh, and then I apply it and I get something of kind, kind star again, type whoops, type map takes, well, it has, I mean, this is again, this is not system F omega because they just have one parameter, but in Scala, you would, as the way you would sort of map it to Scala is you could have multiple parameters again. This guy takes two, two parameters, two types, two proper types and gives you back a proper type, which would be like, if you pass an int comma string, you get map of int comma string, right? So that's kinds, uh, uh, basically having higher kind of types in the language allows us, you know, in our libraries to dis to actually abstract over these. And one place you can see it, for example, is in the, well, uh, the, the collections library, like they have a lot of factored out traits and that this shows up there. It actually makes it easier to write those, the collections library and reduce code duplication. It also shows up a lot in the, uh, like cats library. Um, but that's, that's, uh, that's what it is. And, and, and so, I'm going to make it look like Scala. First of all, this is always inferred in Scala. So you can never say colon star. I'm just going to drop those. So that's um, uh, how that looks in Scala. But the the way that you, you say an arrow type in Scala is with square brackets. So it's kind of looks like a method now. 
Um, so I, I just replaced this one. And this is f is kind start of star. The way you write that in Scala, you say f of x equals list of x, which really looks like this is a method. Um, it's a method at the type level named f that takes some parameter x and it passes it into list and then returns it, and you get list of x. Um, and that does work uh, in Scala. And then similarly in in this one, it, this is a, a kind that takes two parameters and returns a type. Um, I have to I write it like that in Scala. That's how Scala encodes it, or sort of that's the syntax for this in Scala. And that did not change from Scala two to Scala three. Okay, so that's uh, higher kind of types. And it, like I said, it's like a method. Um, I can do all the exact same things at the term level with defs. So this type is like a def at the type level. And the one that is a little odd is I, I said that type n equals n, you could think of that as a val. Um, here I just said def n without parameters, which is valid Scala 2. It's a parameterless method. And that is sort of interchangeable with val at the type level because there's no difference really. Um, there's no side effects. If there's no side effects, then you're not going to notice the difference. And in the type level, there's no side effects. Unless Miles, Miles Sabin maybe could figure out how to put side effects in it. But uh, there should, theoretically should not be any. It's pure, a pure functional uh, language. So, uh, but anyway, this is, this is just the same stuff. I mean, and so I think that kind of can help uh, like intuitively understand higher kind of types if you can map it to something we're familiar with. And so when you go back and forth, these are exactly uh, isomorphic. Um, Okay, so um, so that brings me to type lambdas because uh, if if I you know if these types are like methods at the type level, well, what are lambdas at the type level? Well, they didn't Scala didn't have them until Scala three, um, and they look like this. This is why you picked the double headed arrow. But you can now write this in in uh, Scala. Um, I can say uh, a, a anonymous function at the type level that takes a type and gives back a type. That's like kind star to star, right? Uh, for example, or I could, I could um, this, this one is, is um, the first one is the identity function at the type level. The second one is gonna get, it's the same thing as list. I, I get a list back, I pass in an int, I'll get list of int. Um, pass in two types, I get a map of a, a key value right there. So that, that that's a, very similar syntax to what we have in the term level with our lambdas, our term lambdas. The two differences are instead of parentheses, which is the term level, it's square brackets, which is the type level. And instead of a rocket with one arrowhead uh, at the term level, it's two arrowheads, double arrow, double headed arrow. Okay. So, um, uh, it, it kind of works the same way uh, too. Another way, you know, you can kind of map these two together. Uh, like I was like was showing those two, I had to kind of spread it over two slides, but the, the, the type and the, um, uh, uh, hang on a second, I'm gonna turn down my volume so I don't get distracted by discussion. There we go. Uh, all right, back to this. So this is kind of comparing the type level and the term level again, uh, things that are you're familiar with and then how it works in and sort of the new thing in Scala 3. Um, so here I have a def f equals, um, that's always going to return this, this term lambda that takes an int and increments it. Um, and down below, I have type f equals, that's going to take the type lambda that takes an x and passes it to list and returns it, essentially. Um, and then I can apply it, just kind of like, uh, you know, it, going back up to the def, I just say f of 41, I get 42. Uh, down here, if I say, f, you know, at the bottom, I say f of int, big f of int, I get list of int. Um, so that's how they work. They work, you know, this, this, they're, they're consistent with each other at the type level and the term level. And, um, you know, just to, to show you this in, in, a, in action, so I can say this, um, I just say, well, I can't, say so I can't say f of int uh, because it thinks f is a term. So I have to say type, uh, for example, I have to name a type, and now, now I'm at the type level. I'm going to say f of int, for example, is going to be an alias for list event because it, it you know, I called that type lambda. So anyway, that, that I think all that is very consistent. So if you look at it that way, it, you can kind of understand sort of where these fit. Um, but then I got to wondering because uh, um, there is, um, 
it, it's more complicated than that in, 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 in that uh, these type uh, functions um, can have variance. They need to track variance and they can also have bounds. So let me actually back up and I'll show you an example. Um, this one, for example, um, type f of x, if I wanted to, I could actually put a variance in there. I could say plus like that. And that would enforce that uh, the right-hand side has to be, if this has to be covariant on the right-hand side. Um, and they have to track that. So they, they, they uh, do. The other thing I could do is I could put a, uh, I could say this has to be a subtype of something, of fruit. And now, it, you know, over here, I could have any, any type constructor that takes one parameter, as long as it's covariant, I can use it on the right-hand side and I'll get that thing, but it, it, the X has to be a subtype of fruit. You can also have an, uh, an upper bound. Uh, this is an upper bound. You can also have a lower bound. Um, this is an upper bound. So I could also say, and it's a super type of something, you know, I don't know what, X. Well, it can't be, can't be a super type of itself. Well, it is a super type of itself. So I wonder if they let us say that because that actually is valid. Um, and, it, and you can use f bound. So I could say f of x is a subtype of ordered of x and use x again if I want to. So it's really quite uh, elaborate. And that's where I would get lost because there's subtype relationships between these things. And it was rather confusing, um, you know, trying to figure out what the type lattice or the kind lattice was. So um, what I think makes it simpler, this is sort of the end of my talk, I wanted to I'm, I'm trying to understand if it is possible to rewrite any kind of classification as a type lambda upper bound. So far, I haven't found a way that I can't. So an example here is I have a class EX, you know, example, and um, it takes a type parameter T, which is of kind star to star, uh, because I have to pass in something to it. So a list would work here, um, vector would work here, for example, uh, because I also have this, you know, after you, after you, you know, evaluate that and you get a list of string or something. Um, actually, no, it's not a list of string, it's just list. That has to be a subtype of seek. So a list of, you know, the list that I get after I apply it, list of string has to be a subtype of seek a string, which it is. Um, that is the same thing as saying, I, I have a type, uh, and it has no constraints on it other than an upper bound of a type lambda where that takes an X and gives me back a seek of X. I think those two are equivalent in the sense of the same types will always compile and the same types will always not compile. So that you, you've you got two ways to say the same thing. So that's that's one thing. I'm, I'm kind of asking that partially as a question. Is there, can anybody come up with a way where that isn't true? Um, so that's one thing. And then the other thing that always confused me about uh, type lambdas was how is list a type? Uh, like we thought in the Scala 2 jargon, list is a higher kind of type. And um, it, and it was, you know, it, it just was very, uh, it just didn't feel right to me. And so what um, I, I discovered kind of in the, the documentation of Scala 3, I think makes a lot more sense of how to think about things like list and map. Not that they're higher kind of types because they're not types but that they're like methods at the type level, like named methods, named functions, just like def ID is a named function at the term level. And then you can ADA expand it to get a lambda, a function, an anonymous function, um, list like class list um, or class X, is actually defining a named function, like a method that isn't a type. It's not a higher kind of type. It's just a, it's just this thing. And um, when I apply it, like here, uh, what, uh, what I'm saying is class EX, when I make an instance of that, I have to pass in some type that is a subtype of this type lambda uh, that takes a type and gives me back a seek of that thing, um, I can actually create a new X of list because that list does fulfill that. Uh, that works fine in Scala 3. And what that means is this more verbose thing of new X of you know a type lambda that given a type parameter will return a list. And um, uh, so 
it's eta expansion. So that that is, um, I think, a, a more consistent way to think about um, what list and uh, classes and traits like list and map create is more like type level methods that aren't higher kind of types themselves, but they can be eta expanded into type lambdas um, without the verbosity. I mean, if you go way back to like my eight expansion one here, uh, here at the very bottom line here, there's no verbosity. I don't, I just, I, it's as if I can, I can use a method, a named function as if it's a Lambda, even though it isn't because we wrap it. And then at the type level, it's the same thing. I can use a, go to the last slide here, um, here. I can you you know I can just say list when I need some subtype of a type lambda and it will a to expand that list into a type lambda conceptually so it's the, that's what that means so that's it that was my uh, main uh, thing I thought I could get across in 30 minutes so hopefully that was helpful um 